Ah yes, the Poneglyphs, ladies and gentlemen. The mysterious stone slabs which contain the true history of the One Piece world and are the ultimate goal of Nico Robin. There are 30 of the Poneglyphs in total, however we only know currently about 10 of them. There's one in Alabasta, one on Skypea, formerly on Jaya. There's one in Ohara that is now in the possession of the world government. One in an unknown location that Robin saw in her past. There's one on Fishman Island, one on Zoe, three in the possession of Big Mom, and one in the possession of Kaido. And now, Teking himself will explain in greater detail the true importance of the Poneglyphs. You know what, I really need a sexy Robin poster to go up here because, you know, we're doing videos like this and I'm like, well, I guess I could put up Luffy and Ace, but if I had a sexy Robin poster, I mean, that would just tie the whole thing together, you know what I mean? Okay, so talking about Poneglyphs in this video, we're gonna go through all the different Poneglyphs that have been introduced in One Piece so far. Uh, normal Poneglyphs, Road Poneglyphs, uh, we're gonna talk about the Rio Poneglyphs and all that shit. Um, this isn't a video discussing, you know, uh, all the different things that Poneglyphs are connected to, though, like the Ancient Kingdom and the Ancient Weapons. I already did a video on the Ancient Weapons, I'm gonna do one about the Kingdom as well as the Will of D. Um, but this is just, you know, to go through all the Poneglyphs. And there's another reason I'm making this video, and it's, it's spawned out of a common misconception that I keep getting uh, messages about. People keep asking me about something related to Poneglyphs um, that is rooted in something that it... They, they might think it's gonna go somewhere, like it's really important, but it just turns out to be just a piece of anime filler and that's all it ever amounted to. Um, but every time I see that, it just it keeps coming in. So hopefully I'll get to set the record straight in this video. Um, so let's, uh, let's start from the beginning. Let's talk about where the Poneglyphs came from, because a lot of this information we didn't get until uh, most recently and story arcs like Totland and in Zo. Um, but essentially the Poneglyphs are these giant stone uh, cubes that were created by the Kozuki clan where uh, Momonosuke and his father Odin are part of, uh, you know, and, and uh, Kinemon and Kanjuro and Raizo, they're all retainers of the Kozuki clan. They're from uh, the country of Wano. And they were created during the Void Century to basically be indestructible because whatever shit went down in the Void Century, we don't know what it was, but it was fucking intense. Um, the people of Wano and the Kozuki clan, they wanted a way so that future generations could learn about what happened um, that just the, the government couldn't just get rid of. The government couldn't just destroy them. So they used some very special, like, um, stonemason technique or whatever. They had this special material. I don't know, even know what the hell it's made out of. Um, it it kind of reminds me a lot of that, uh, that Kachin stuff from uh, the Dragon Ball Z manga. You know, that stuff that broke the Z sword, that, like, that solid cube of, like, indestructible material. Um, that's what it reminds me of, but they were um, skilled enough stonemasons to etch carvings into them directly uh, in a language that was unknown to anybody, apparently, just into, like, the Kozuki clan. They're the ones that had this knowledge. Um, there's some other people throughout the world that have the ability to read the, you know, to hear the voices of all things, like, you know, you had Roger, and Joy Boy probably had it, and Luffy has it. Uh, then you have clans, like the Third Eye clan, that are able to just decipher anything, uh, that are able just to, like, hear the voice of all things, even if they don't actually understand the script, um, like Roger didn't, he wasn't a scholar, Roger didn't actually know how to read that foreign language, but he was able to just hear what, I guess, the person etching it really wanted, like, the message getting across, like, what it really meant, um, and that's how Roger kind of, like, hoodwinked Big Mom during, you know, like, 20 years ago, and how he managed to get her, her road poneglyph carving, so, um, that, that was the skill that they had, but it, it, other than that, the actual knowledge of the language was passed down through the Kozuki clan, ending with uh, Odin, who was the Daimo. And Odin was supposed to pass down this information to his son Momonosuke, the Hare, um, but shit happened, and then Kaido took over, and then you had the shit with the Shogun, and Odin ended up dying, or at least that's the story that we've been told so far. Odin ended up dying, and um, he was unable to pass down and burden uh, the, the future generations with that knowledge. So apparently the original knowledge of deciphering the Poneglyphs the correct way just by reading them, um, you know, from the from the Kozuki clan, that apparently has ended. But that's okay, though, because like I said, you got other people like uh, Roger who were able to decipher it, the Third Eye clan, and you have Nico Robin who learned how to read Poneglyphs from um, her studies on Ohara. And I could assume that perhaps since Ohara was an island devoted to just studying history, uh, perhaps maybe a member of the Kozuki clan was tied to uh, the professors and the scholars on Ohara, and that's how they learned how to decipher the Poneglyphs. 
poneglyphs, and that's how they learned, you know, to get their hands on one, because there was a poneglyph on Ohara, and then Robin just learned that information from them. But since the government took out Ohara, uh, the only scholar remaining from there that can read it is Nico Robin herself. That's the only one. Um, so it's it's an interesting pre it's an interesting premise to have these unbreakable stone blocks that record the true history of the world, and they also talk about where to get your hands on these ancient weapons and everything. Um, and it's funny because the world these are a pain in the ass for the world government, but they can't do anything about them. They're indestructible. The world government. I, I, I'm imagining just everybody, all the Marines, all the members of the world government trying to figure out a way to destroy these damn things and they just can't do it um and it's funny because even in the one piece world like in our world how do you get rid of something that you can't destroy be like all right we have to make sure that nobody reads this but we can't destroy it okay um chuck it in the deepest part of the ocean well that doesn't work in the one piece world because you have an entire society on the seafloor you have fishmen and mermen wandering around that could end up getting their hands on it so that's not going to guarantee safety um you can't blast it into space because i mean there's no rockets or anything but even if you could there's an entire society on the clouds and also it on the moon so that's not going to help out very much so these are a constant pain in the ass for the world government if anybody found these things and was able to decipher them not only would it tell you about the true history of the world not only would it lead you to these ultimate super weapons that can threaten the world government itself but it could also lead you to raftal which has all these other mysteries as well as not including uh, not not just including one piece that roger hid there on top of one piece there's also a bunch of other mysteries around raftal that i'm sure the government doesn't want pirates or anybody to get to um so th this is a constant threat to their reign and anybody that's even found out about researching the poneglyphs they you know the buster call their island to the ground. Although Iceberg did state uh, to Robin that simply knowing about the existence of the Poneglyphs, that's okay. That's not punishable by law. I would assume that it's part of like the government's propaganda. Like, all right, we're, we're, we're going to teach all the kids of the world. Like, these are Poneglyphs. These are bad things. You hear about anybody reading these things. You you see one in, in a forest or in an obscure place. You tell people about these. So, you know, the world government can take them away because they are dangerous. They threaten our perfect world. You know, all hail world government government all hell wg um so yeah that that's the case there now we actually don't really know the script in which uh, the Poneglyphs uh, are, are displaying. We actually don't know how to read that uh, as the readers of One Piece, you know? Uh, all we have to go off of is usually just somebody, usually Robin, looking at the Poneglyph and she'll be like, da 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 okay, it talks about this, it talks about this, and that's it. We don't actually know what they really say. Now, there are a total of 30 Poneglyphs in the entire world. 30 Poneglyphs that were passed down from the Kozuki clan. Now, this is a number that also has been subject of debate because maybe Oda didn't have this dead set on 30 when he introduced the concept of the Poneglyphs. It was back in the fucking Alabasta arc. It was over like 10, 15 years ago that he introduced this concept. Um, I know that there's a few dubs of One Piece that talk about like Robin saying that there's thousands of Poneglyphs out there in the world scattered all over the place. Um, but in the Totland arc, it was stated that, yeah, there's only 30 of them. Now, that doesn't exclude the possibility that there might be other um, scripts written in that same language, but it not not poneglyphs. Like I think you know, in Skypea, when Robin was exploring Skypea, she saw a lot of scripts written on the side of like just normal ruins uh, that were like the same as on the poneglyphs. So there, there, you might see the language every now and then popping up. You might see that kind of written language, um, but that doesn't mean that it's attached to a poneglyph. There's only 30 poneglyphs in the entire world that are these indestructible blocks that are really important. Four of which are road poneglyphs uh, that are colored red so you can distinguish them from other poneglyphs. And if you connect all four of these road poneglyphs, they will, will each one will lead you to a specific location. And then after you get all four locations given by each road poneglyph, you have to line them all up on a map. And then the point where they all intersect, these four points, um, that's the location of Raftail Island, which is actually submerged under the water. So uh, the road poneglyphs are basically the overarching goal of Luffy right now because Luffy wants to find one, the One Piece which is on Raftal. How do you get to Raftal? You need the Road Poneglyph. So that would be somebody like Luffy's as well as a lot of other pirates' ultimate goal to get the Road Poneglyphs. One is in possession of Big Mom uh, where the rubbings were actually stolen by Brook so now they're in the possession of the Straw Hats. One is in possession of Kaido who is currently allying with the Shogun of Wano so that's where the Straw Hats 
Pirates are heading next. And the third one is in the possession of uh, the Minx. It's on Zoe, hidden in the Whale Tree. So, so far, uh, the Straw Hats have gathered the information of two points uh, from the Road Poneglyphs. Well, actually, they really haven't deciphered the one from the Road Poneglyph on, uh, in Totland yet, because they had nobody to decipher it. Um, it's weird, even though Luffy clearly has displayed the ability to, you know, hear the voices of all things, he clearly hasn't mastered this power, and he doesn't really even know a lot about it yet, um, because, you know, he, he hasn't mastered it to the point where Roger had it, where Roger was aware of this power, and he could actually, like, look at the Poneglyph and understand what it means. Luffy, you know, Luffy's looking at the thing like, hmm, yeah, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. So, uh, maybe Luffy has to, like, work to awaken that power, or, you know, train with it the same way he trained with hockey in order to actually learn, um, you know, to actually use it to read the Poneglyphs like Roger did. Um, now the fourth Poneglyph, the fourth road Poneglyph is actually unknown. We don't know where it is. Um, some people think that Shanks has it because if we're going along with the, the, the you know, like both Yonko have it, Big Mom and Kaido, they had one. Um, Blackbeard is kind of a new Yonko, so it's very doubtful that he would have one. Whitebeard wasn't really interested in that stuff at all, so I don't think he would have had one. Um, but that's another theory that the Whitebeard Pirates that were defeated during the Payback War, they're now in hiding. Um, maybe they might have it. Um, I'm going to go with the idea that it's either on the moon, uh, because that's a good place to hide it. And we already know that there's a civilization up there, and Eneru is actually going to have some connection with the Last Road Poneglyph. Um, or it's in the possession of Shanks. Uh, now, Shanks, I don't believe, was on Raftal with that during that final journey when Roger actually went there. I don't think Shanks and Buggy were there, um, because that brings up a big issue like if buggy and Sh like if shanks was on raftal so was buggy i mean buggy and shanks were the the apprentice pirates on the crew they were together okay so it's not like right yeah shanks was on raftal but buggy left no that's not the case so if buggy was on raftal then why would he be fucking around with like these other treasures or anything like that he knows where the greatest treasure of all time is is hidden you know even if even if buggy doesn't want to himself make the journey you think he could sort of profit off that information like hey i'm one of the few people alive in the world that knows where Raftel is. Get get your Raftel maps. Get your maps to the hidden treasure of the Pirate King. You know, you think even, even you know, you think you'd be able to make a little bit of money off that. Whatever. Um, so yeah, I don't think Shanks and, and Buggy were on Raftel. I actually don't think they know where it's at. Now, Shanks, I don't even think is interested in. I don't think Shanks is interested in trying to find the One Piece. He probably has his own motivations and everything like that. But Buggy most certainly would be interested in that, getting the greatest treasure of all time. I think Buggy would be interested in that. Um, so the fact he hasn't gone after it yet or doesn't even have interest in going after it. I think that's pretty clear that he doesn't has no fucking idea where it is. Um, so those are the four road poneglyphs. On top of that, you then have nine Rio poneglyphs. Now the Rio poneglyphs are the ones that actually record the information that is relevant to the Void Century, the hidden history of the world. Once you gather the information of all nine Rio poneglyphs together, you'll get the full picture of what happened during the Void Century. Um, what was up with the ancient kingdom? What was up with the ancient weaponry, what was up with the world government coming to power, what's up probably with the Will of D, and Joy Boy might have a connection with that somewhere. You know, that's all there in a series of nine poneglyphs uh, that Robin is currently searching for. So that's the current goal of Robin, to get her hands on the nine poneglyphs uh, that are the Rio poneglyphs. Now, we don't actually know which poneglyphs are Rio poneglyphs and which ones are not. For instance, the poneglyph that was existent on Skypea, you know, or rather it was on Jaya, but then got shot into Skypea, it's talking about the location of an ancient weapon, Poseidon. So I figure, you know, if, you know, the ancient weapons are definitely going to be a connection to the Void Century. So does that mean that, uh, let, let's just say there's one Poneglyph for each ancient weapon. Let's say the Poneglyph in Skypea, that talked about where to get your hands on Poseidon. There's another Poneglyph that talks about where Pluton is, which is in Alabasta, which is what Crocodile was looking for. And then there's a third Poneglyph somewhere out there in the world that talks about uh, Uranus, uh, or Uranus, if you want to, okay, fine, whatever. Um, so those are three Poneglyphs that are all dedicated to the three ancient weapons. I would say those are probably Rio Poneglyphs, because the ancient weapons are a big part Part of that history and it's also one of the reasons that the government doesn't want people to decipher these things because these are things that could threaten the rule of their uh, their 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 empire that they've set up their their um, oligarchy that they have um so yeah robin currently has the information she's got the deets on two ancient weapons now to be fair one of those ancient weapons poseidon is not actually a, a weapon that you could just jump inside of and then just you know destroy the world you know it's shirahoshi you can jump on top of her um as luffy did with her 
yeah, but you can't exactly pilot her, is what I'm saying. She's a living creature um, that uses the ability to speak with sea kings, and if that power was used to its fullest extent, I think you can understand where we're coming from here. The ability to control giant leviathan sea dragons to wipe out the world, you know, you could easily do that, given how big the sea kings are, how many there are in the world, and if you have the ability to just master control them, you know, that would be very dangerous, uh, but a little bit more difficult to control. Uh, but she does know the location of Pluton, which is just a giant like fuck off battleship so yeah we don't we, we don't know where it is but robin does and then the third ancient weapon uranos we don't know where that's at we don't know if the pawning where, where the pawning glyph that discusses that is at. um you also have the other remaining um it would be the other remaining 14 poneglyphs that discuss uh just history you know so there's probably some of them that just talk like for example joy boy's letter uh which is on the poneglyph in the sea forest uh you know during, near fishman island it doesn't discuss any Anything about uh, the Void Century. It doesn't discuss anything about um, the ancient weapons. It's an apology letter that Joy Boy made to the previous, uh, you know, mermaid princess Poseidon that lived, you know, 900 years ago. Um, and that's what that is. So, so far to break these down, this poneglyph that talks about um, just, you know, basic history or is like an apology letter, that's just an ordinary poneglyph. It's still indestructible, but it doesn't talk about the things about the world that are really important, I guess I should say. Then you have the four road poneglyphs that, after deciphering all four of them, reveal the location of Raftal, which is where the One Piece is hidden, and then you have the nine Rio poneglyphs that are all focused on everything pertaining to the Void Century that's of any relevance. Um, so, uh, really, I would say it's probably just the road poneglyphs and the Rio poneglyphs that the world government is ultimately concerned with. Um, and we, we don't actually know, is there anybody in the world government that can decipher poneglyphs? I don't think there is. Um, so it's more of just, like, you find a poneglyph, get rid of it, or try to hide it or lock it up in the world government. I'm sure, I, I feel like there's got to be at least a few of them locked up in Marijua, you know what I mean? Because this is the world government, ultimate power, you got an entire navy under your, your ploy, you got the fucking cypher pole agency scouring the world for these things. I, I feel like there's got to be a few poneglyphs, you know, hidden away. And I think the one from Ohara is probably there too, because there was one on Ohara yeah, sure, you buster call the hell out of Ohara, but even if you obliterated the island and the poneglyph sank to the bottom of the sea, that doesn't guarantee your your, your protection. So they probably took the the one from Ohara, and that, that one's probably, um, you know, locked up in Marijua somewhere. I'm sure there's a few others that are there as well. Uh, perhaps it's even the last road poneglyph is there, that the world government was in possession of the last one all along. Hey, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, they're not going to want to tell people where, you know, it's located, so it might just be lost, and, you know, hell, maybe the, the Straw Hats might have to infiltrate Marijua at some point to get their hands on it. I, I don't know. Um, but uh, that's the case with that. Now, uh, to just go through every single one that we've known so far. All right, so the first Poneglyph that's really introduced of any relevance is the one in Alabasta. This is the one that Crocodile wanted deciphered. It was located under the palace in Alubarna. This is the whole reason Nico Robin, you know, that who joined up with the Baroque Works. That's why Crocodile wanted her. Um, this one actually has the location to Pluton, one of the ancient weapons, although Robin lied to Crocodile and stated that it was just history, uh, which resulted in Crocodile killing her. Um... Yeah, but it, it actually does in, include the location to the to the ancient weapons, so I would assume it's probably a real poneglyph in that regard if they're talking about the weapons. Um, the next one that we see in the story is the one that was previously located on Jaya Island, but the knock upstream, you know, knocked in into the sky, uh, resulting it now being in Skypea in Upper Yard. So Robin finds this one at the end of the Skypea arc. Uh, she reads it, and it leads to the location of uh, Poseidon, uh, which is another ancient weapon that's in Fish. Island says it gives its location, Fishman Island. Uh, this was also one off to the side where Roger wrote in the same language that he didn't really understand it. He just probably let his, you know, the power of reading the voices to guide him. Um, but Roger added like a, his little graffiti on the side that says, I will guide this passage all the way to the end. Pirate Gold Day Roger. Um, and now, to be fair, Robin says both times, this isn't what I'm looking for. I don't think she meant that these aren't real poneglyphs. I think that's just, she's looking for very specific information. If each one of the nine real poneglyphs discusses something very important about the Void Century, Robin's probably only looking for, like, she wants to find the poneglyph that talks about probably, like, the fucking world government. Like, what's up here? What's up with the fucking world government? How do they take over? What happened? You know, that's the thing that she's probably interested in. And also probably the one that talks about the Will of D, too, because of Jaguar, D, Saul, and everything like that. Um, 
Um, but she's probably not interested in the ones that are just talking about the weapons that destroy everything. So that's that's not what Robin's really into. Um, so then after that, we get Robin's backstory. Uh, where we... No, god damn it, not that backstory! We get her uh, background involving Ohara, how she grew up there. Like I said, there was a Poneglyph located on Ohara. We don't know really anything about this one. Um, whether we know the scholars of Ohara were studying it, I would like to think it would be a real Poneglyph in that regard if they were studying it. Um, but uh, we just don't know. The only thing that we really don't know is that it's not a, a road Poneglyph because the road Poneglyphs are all red in color. Uh, and this one was just the standard, uh, the standard bluish color. Um, then we get little glimpses of Robin traveling all over the world as a child, you know, she's trying to escape the world government, and she runs across a Poneglyph here in her past at some unidentified point after she left Ohara. Um, and I would assume this one is probably most likely just a normal Poneglyph that discusses history, because it was just kind of glossed over, like, oh, so this is a Poneglyph, like Robin actually ch having a chance to read it without, you know, fear of being destroyed. It was just out in the forest somewhere. Um, so I would assume, yeah, this is just a normal Poneglyph that talks about history and, and nothing more. Um, after that, we get to Fishman Island, where Robin finds the apology letter that Joy Boy wrote to the previous Poseidon. That's, once again, just an apology letter, nothing really that relevant. Um, although I'm sure it's going to be relevant to, like, Joy Boy's history, because everyone cares about Joy Boy. Who the fuck was Joy Boy? Watch Joy Boy if you want more information about Joy Boy. Um, and then you have the last Poneglyph that was shown, uh, the road Poneglyph in the Zoark. I'm sorry, not the last one that was shown, but it was shown in the Zoark. That was what introduced the road Poneglyph's concept, so there's one there. Um, then we get three that are currently in in the possession of Big Mom, one of which is a road poneglyph, and one of which was one that Jinbei found in the ruins underneath the ocean, or rather, it was on the surface, and then those ruins were destroyed, and then it floated down to the seafloor, but because fishmen are a thing, uh, they were able to find it and then bring it to the surface, and then Jinbei gave it to Big Mom. So Big Mom's in possession of three, only one of which is the road poneglyph. I want to hope that considering Robin's not around during the Totland arc to look at these, I would like to hope that the other two Poneglyphs she has are merely just um, history Poneglyphs, the, the standard normal Poneglyphs, not real Poneglyphs, because otherwise that throws a wrench in things, you know, Robin has to, like, backtrack to Totland. Like, I, I, I just hope to think that the only one of relevance she had was the road Poneglyph. Okay. And uh, those are the only ones that we know about so far. Those are the only ones there. So, Alabasta... Skypea or Jaya, um, Zoe, Road Poneglyph, then we have the one, two, three that are in the possession of Big Mom, then we have the one on Ohara, then we have the one then in Robin's backstory that she saw. Uh, so, so far that is eight, eight Poneglyphs that we've seen so far in the story out of 30. So, there you go. Now, uh, and I guess you could also throw the one in with Kaido, too. We don't know where that one is exactly, where Kaido's keeping it, but it's a road Poneglyph, so we know the location of it, so we might as well throw in the 9 that we actually know something about. Uh, so that still leaves 21. That still leaves a decent number of them that we just don't know where they're at or whatever. Um, now, here's the kicker, and this is the thing why I wanted to make this video. I was going to tack it on in the end because I knew I was going to fucking rant about it. Okay, here's the deal. During the Alabaster arc, there was an anime filler. An anime filler, as in non-canon, as in doesn't connect with the manga, as in is not in the manga at all, where Zoro and Luffy and Chopper are wandering through the desert, and they fall into a cavern, and in this cavern, they find a Poneglyph, and they look at it, and they obviously can't decipher it, so they just ignore it, and then they go and try to get out of the cavern, and then they continue on their way. For some reason, I don't know why, the anime department decided to introduce Poneglyphs earlier on in the story than they were in the manga. I don't know why they chose to do that. The moment that they were introduced in the manga seemed fine to me. Robin gives a nice little explanation about what the basic concept of a Poneglyph is and what her goals are, but I guess the anime team just wanted to introduce it earlier. Um, so they threw in this random Poneglyph just buried somewhere in the deserts of Alabasta under the sand in this giant cavern. And now every so often, whenever I'm talking about Poneglyphs, I inevitably get a comment that's like, Tekken, you forgot about that one Poneglyph that the Luffy and Zoro found in the desert. They gotta go find that still. No, they don't. It doesn't exist, okay? Just ignore it. Please, just ignore it. Um, like I said, maybe Oda didn't have an exact plan on where he was going to go with how many Poneglyphs there were actually going to be. Uh, maybe he wasn't dead set on that number 30. Um, 
Maybe the anime just wanted to show them off earlier. That's probably the reason, or they just needed a filler episode. They needed something to pad out the Alabaster arc a little bit further, and they decided to do that instead. I really wish they wouldn't have, because it really fucked things over in the long run. Um, but yeah, it doesn't exist, okay? So don't think that, all oh, the Straw Hats, Robin has to backtrack to Alabasta to, you know, go in that cavern and read about that Poneglyph, or, you know, Vivi's gotta find it, or something like that, or, no, they don't, okay? It doesn't exist, it's not real, um, just pretend like it never happened, please. Makes life so much easier, uh, because it was just an anime-only thing that I'm sure everybody else has always forgot about, except the most die-hard of One Piece fans, um, but, uh, yeah, it, it didn't happen in the manga, so just disregard it, please. Of course, because I ranted so much about it now, I'm gonna get a bunch of messages like, Hey, Tacking, what about that Poneglyph here? You know? What about that? I think somebody also uh, sent me, uh, it was a Twitter uh, message a while ago where somebody found the, the Poneglyph script written in, um, written in Impel Down, you know? And I, I also feel like from the animation department or just from Oda's perspective that whenever Oda wants to write something in like an old school language that, you know, th that actually doesn't exist, he might just use the Poneglyph language, you know? Like, it's there in the ruins of the, the Skypea, the Shandorian City of Gold. Like, it's it's etched in the ruins there. Um, but it might just be, it might, hey, it might, for all we know, it might be a different language. You know, like, because this is Oda just making this shit up for all we know, and it might just be, like, the language has a similar aesthetic, but it's not the same. You know, like, there's a lot of languages in our modern world that use, um, like, like Spanish and English have a similar alphabet, similar looking letters, um, but the way that they're combined together to make words and everything like that, completely different. Uh, so that, that might be the same deal here, like, this might not be the same as Poneglyph script, for all we know. Um, but yeah, I, I think... I think only be concerned with it when it actually is introduced as a Poneglyph in the manga. Uh, don't freak out too much whenever you see the Poneglyph-like script, you know, on the side of a wall somewhere or something. Um, I feel like if, if it's really relevant, the characters are going to bring it up. Or if it was actually going to be a Poneglyph, they were going to bring that up or something like that. Um, but yeah, I just want to do this video looking at Poneglyphs and their history, all about Poneglyphs and all that shit. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, somebody wants to send me a sexy Robin poster. I'm fine with that. Uh, I gotta get going because there is an eclipse in about an hour that I am itching to check out. So thanks for watching, everybody. Techie101 signing out. Later.